has been 15 days since Kevin McCarthy was deposed by his party's MAGA wing. And Jim Jordan is still trying to fill his tiny, tiny little shoes. But here's the thing. House speakers, at least the recent ones, get the job in very traditional ways, by building relationships, rising through the ranks, with a little cajoling here and there, time and experience. That is what builds a speaker. Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi was a prodigious fundraiser for fellow Democrats and an unparalleled vote counter before becoming the first female speaker. Tip O'Neill was so popular, a colleague said he had no enemies in the House. John Boehner, well, he was a cash machine for Republicans. So much so that when he was in leadership, he was questioned by colleagues and apologized for handing out tobacco pack checks on the House floor. Even Kevin McCarthy, despite his many, 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 many faults, is very good at hauling in money for Republicans. Then there's Jim Jordan, who's asking his colleagues for a promotion and giving them nothing to show for it, when all he's done as a member is scream and fight. As Hayes Brown writes for MSNBC, there are three main jobs members of Congress have, writing and passing laws, providing a check and balance on the other branches, and serving their constituents. Jordan, amazingly, is bad at all three. In fact, while nominating Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, Congressman Pete Aguilar called out Jordan's many flaws and reminded us who has actually received the most votes on 17 ballots this year. 212 to 200. No amount of election denying is going to take away from those vote totals. The Speaker of the House must be a legislator. And the gentleman from Ohio falls short in that regard. He supports an extreme agenda and is hell-bent on banning abortion nationwide. Gutting Medicare, gutting Social Security, and giving cover to January 6th attackers. Jordan failed to win the speaker's gavel for a second time today, getting just 199 votes, fewer than he received in the first ballot yesterday. And it's pretty easy to see why his Trump-style public bullying effort through right-wing media. Fox's Sean Hannity has been personally lobbying Jordan holdouts. And Axios revealed a note that a Hannity producer emailed to Republican congressional staffers asking why their bosses weren't supporting Jordan. So how's the intimidation effort going for Jim Jordan's vote count? Well, Arkansas Congressman Steve Womack told The Washington Post that his staff has been cussed out. They've been threatened. It's been nonstop. Most of them are out-of-state calls. Two other Republicans, Kay Granger and Jen Kiggings, both tweeted about how threats and intimidation would not be changing their votes. But the most appalling might be text messages sent to the wife of Nebraska's Don Bacon, saying, why is your husband causing chaos by not supporting Jim Jordan? I thought he was a team player. And your husband will never hold elected office again. That worked so well, Don Bacon voted for Kevin McCarthy. The reality is that all of Jim Jordan's tactics, whether it's screaming in committee meetings or bullying his colleagues into submission, revolve around one person, Donald J. Trump. But those tactics don't work for anyone else except Donald Trump, as evidenced by Jordan's diminishing support for House Speaker. He'll give it another try tomorrow. Joining me now is NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitali and Tara Setmeyer, former advisor to the Lincoln Project, a senior advisor to the Lincoln Project, and former Republican communications director. We are not reversing those because we're, she, she is on the right track no. now. Uh, Ali, I do want to go to you first because the, the threats uh, to me are the most uh, sort of revealing uh, and also disturbing part of this, uh, because that has been the tactic that Jim Jordan is using. There's a representative named Marionette Miller Meeks. She's released a statement yeah. about receiving death threats after switching her vote against Jim Jordan. Here's what she said. However, since my vote in support of Chairwoman Granger, um, I have received credible death threats and a barrage of threatening <clears throat> calls. The proper authorities have been notified and my office is cooperating fully. One thing I cannot stomach <clears throat> or support is a bully. What the hell is going on on the Hill? Look, 
this is just happening in the last few minutes that Congresswoman Miller Meeks is saying she's gotten credible death threats and threatening calls since she flipped her vote yesterday from Jordan to today voting for Chairwoman Kay Granger, which is less a vote about Granger and more a vote about Miller Meeks just trying to throw her support behind someone who isn't Jim Jordan. She also references in that statement that she's gotten calls to her office that say she should be voting for Jordan. She's gotten calls to her office saying that they need to find a conservative consensus candidate. And now that's what she's calling for in this statement. I think when you look at the fact that threats have been going across the board, you talk about Don Bacon, uh, Carlos Jimenez, someone else who voted against Jordan, now Marionette Miller Meeks, Jen Kiggins. All of these names are, of course, part of a public list because the way that they vote in the House is public. But it's also something that Turning Point Action, a conservative grassroots group that's very aligned with Donald Trump, has tweeted urging their followers to reach out to them, light up their phone lines. I'm not saying that this is the only reason, but it was pointed out to me by a Republican operative that these things don't just happen in a vacuum. I would also point out that Jordan's spokesperson just in the last few minutes says that this is abhorrent and he condemns the fact that threats are being leveraged, but nevertheless, they are. And by the way, let me just point out that Matt Gates for Congress, uh, he sent out a letter that says, uh, hi, this is Matt Gates. We're inches from electing Speaker Jim Jordan, but rhinos are working with radical Democrats like AOC, Ilhan Omar, and Rashida Sleeve to block Jim Jordan from becoming Speaker. Matt Gates claims the email was sent by a vendor without his approval, but he is sending out these messages. Um, and our other members pointing the finger at him. Um, he is the one who triggered all of this by, uh, you know, triggering the motion to vacate. Is he getting any blowback for the threats his fellow members are receiving? Not that I can tell. I mean, McCarthy did condemn Gates for fundraising off of this. Whether or not it was his fault, I don't actually know. But Gates is not someone who was ever here to make new friends by motioning to vacate against McCarthy. And I think that most people that are murmuring behind his back and in the media saying, this is why we're here, are the exact same people that were never too keen on Matt Gates anyway. So I'm not sure there was ever going to be, be a permission structure where Matt Gates sort of gets his from within the conference for putting them in this situation. They're frustrated with him then. They're frustrated with him now. I don't know that it's any different. Yeah. Tara, I mean, you, you worked on the Hill. Have you ever heard of a television, cable television host, Sean Hannity, and his producers personally lobbying for who should be speaker? No. Uh, this is all very new. This is all the era of Trumpism, uh, where the entertainment, the political entertainment complex here seems to rule the day, not governing, not the Constitution, not what's in the best interest of the American people. This is just further evidence of the influence that Fox News has had, um, and not in a good way. I, I just, it's, I mean, back in the day when I was on the Hill, did we collaborate with, with Fox News producers on policy stories? Yes. Was there ever a campaign to, to threaten members of Congress over the Speaker's uh, vote? No, because Republicans had it together back then. I mean, you had a couple of rabble rousers here and there, but for the most part, the Republicans could govern. This is absolute insanity. And I tell you right now, the winner here, just from a political, you know, political perspective, mm -hmm. it's the Democrats. Going into the election next year, they should use this chaos and they should use Jim Jordan um, as the cudgel and as the villain, the way that they used, we did back in the day, Nancy Pelosi, and the way the Republicans now use the squad. Content, associate every single member that voted for Jim Jordan, whether it was the first, second, or third round, or whenever they voted for them, if they cast a vote and clapped for Jim Jordan, you tie them together and his extremism and his loyalty to MAGA. This, now that's the political... Um, cynical side of things. In the meantime, the country suffers because you have a major party that can't get its act together, and we have the world on fire. So this is something I think that people really should take a look at and make a decision. Is this the type of politics we want, where you have members of Congress threatening each other? By the way, welcome to our world. Never mm. Trumpers like me and those of us who have been outspoken against this, this MAGA scourge, We've gotten those types of threats for years to the point where when I used to work over at another network, I used to have to have armed security guards escort me in and out of the building when I would go on air because of the level of threats I used to get for speaking the truth about Donald Trump and MAGA. So now they're getting a taste of their own medicine. And maybe maybe now enough is enough. I don't know. What is it going to take? Hold it. 
Uh, Ali, you know, you, you are on the Hill talking with these Republicans. I mean, at some point, you know, the, the, the sort of less far right wing Republicans have to make a choice. Right. And there's been a lot of talk. I mean, Jamie Raskin was uh, on with Chris Hayes last night, floating names of people who aren't in Congress, which is actually yeah. allowed. Um, people like Liz Cheney, <clears throat> Mitt Romney, Senator Angus King, they said could work. Uh, Jim Jordan has been trying to assuage some of the doubts. I mean, being speaker, a lot of the job is fundraising. He doesn't do that well either. And so he's not got anything to bring to the table. He can't ask, he can't promise people anything because what people don't want is him. Is there, <laughs> is there any attempt to maybe cobble together an idea of a consensus speaker that maybe some Democrats could vote for? Because Hakeem Jeffries is actually capable of delivering votes. Yeah, look, I think the political fundraising concerns are real. We should just highlight that and underscore it because it is important. McCarthy was a machine on fundraising and money. Scalise, frankly, would have been too. Jordan really is lacking in that department. When you think about this idea of a consensus candidate, I appreciate Chairman Raskin's suggestions. I don't think that Liz Cheney would get any votes. Mitt Romney and <laughs> Angus King, same. But I have heard from some Democrats who have floated other names of people who are currently in the House and Hakeem Jeffries himself, the top Democrat, has said there are members of this Republican Party who they could find to be palatable and almost partners. They're not talking about this as a coalition government, at least not in any real kind of a sense. What they're likely talking about here is giving Speaker Pro Tem Patrick McHenry some extra powers that he may not have right now to actually just run the floor. And I'm not talking about this for the next year and a half or through the end of the Congress. I'm talking about this through maybe November 17th, which is the day that the government set to shut down, or maybe through the end of the year. Then they would come back and actually try to figure out what a new speakership would look like. Democrats are not under any illusion that they're going to get a Democrat here. They don't think that, and that's not what they're pushing for. They're pushing for a Republican who is not Jim Jordan, who, in their <laughs> words, is not an extreme insurrectionist sympathizer. And instead, they're floating people's names like Steve Womack. Uh, Tom Cole, veteran people who yeah. know how this building works, who are a little bit more moderate in their stances. I'm not saying but, it's going to happen, but I'm saying yeah. they're open to it.